Hello to everyone. I'm really excited about doing this today. I wanted to tell you my name is Dale, and which is very often a boy's name, but my mother put a Y in the middle of it. So it's D-A-Y-L-E. And just to, to tell you some things about me when I was very young, I loved to play school and I had like a little school down in my basement. And I had a close friend that she was, we were friends since we were three years old and I was always the teacher and she agreed to that. So that made us friends forever. We're still friends after all these years. And my grandfather built like a little house down there for me and he was an electrician so the phone would actually ring. So even from a little child, I just always enjoyed teaching and I've actually been teaching, I've just retired now, but was teaching for 50 years. And they've always been with young children, like pre-K, kindergarten, first, second, and third grade. Third grade was the highest I ever went to. And when I lived in Oakland, Maryland, uh, I had my own little preschool. It was called the Early Learning Center. And I had that for like 18 years. And I was really happy because my own children came and they were students there. But uh, my assistant was the one who took care of them. So that worked out. And I'm interested in a lot of things. I played a lot of sports and I still play tennis and I'm a beginner in golf and I like a lot of book clubs and taking classes. I'm forever taking classes. I love to keep learning things. So and actually when I was teaching in West Virginia, I had a little book club there and there were children from first grade, second, third, and fourth. I had two children from each grade and we would actually read picture books. And even the older children learned a lot from the picture books, even though they seem like they're for young children. Some of the messages are for those a lot older. So in my classroom, whenever I was getting ready to read a story for the day, it just so happened I little by little had a collection of hats. So instead of telling the children what the story was going to be about, I would pull it out of a bag and I'd pull the hat out and then they would sort of have a clue as to what the story was. So like for today, the hat that I would have pulled out if I was actually in my classroom again was this hat. And you can guess what it is. This is going to be a fish story. In fact, it's going to be a goldfish story. And the goldfish's name is Corinne. And the story is going to be called Corinne's Fin. I hope you enjoy it. Okay, let's see. I'm going to bring the book up so you can see it. There we go. And I should tell you that my illustrator, Ashley Teets, and she is now Ashley Teets Volante, she sent me the picture of her creation of Corinne. It was actually on the day when my one and only little granddaughter was born. So it was very exciting. I felt like I had two little babies come at the same, on the same day. And you'll see those cute little turtles at the bottom of the cover of this book. I never mentioned a thing about turtles, but Ashley included these little turtles on a lot of pages. And she has such expression with those little turtles, I couldn't believe it. So let's begin. It's called Corinne's Fin. So 
All right, this is the opening part of the book. And if you'll notice the blue color is just beautiful. Ashley picked a beautiful color of blue. I was worried at first when she was going to do the story because I thought, oh my goodness, the whole story is underwater. But you'll see what she was able to do. Now this page where it has both our names on it, this is where I wind up signing, like if I someone buys a book or I give them a book, I'll write their name on this page and I usually write like a secret message on the page, which has been a lot of fun. And you'll see the name headline of uh, kids at the bottom. This is part of headline books. Okay, now when you write a story, usually people dedicate the story to somebody. So for this story, I dedicated it to my three daughters, Erin, Shannon, and Megan who taught me a lot of life's lessons throughout the years. You can learn from your children too. Now this is the beginning of the story. Corinne could swim from shore to shore, from dawn to dusk, and from season to season. Now you might wonder what dawn to dusk means, some of you may know, it's from early morning till early night. And season to season, we have four seasons. You might know what they are. There's summer, fall, winter, and spring. And I never imagined that Ashley would think about putting little hats on some of the fish but you can tell where winter is and where fall is. And in summer, we have lots of flowers. Well, Corinne would win lots of ribbons and her underwater bulletin board was filled with first place blue ribbons. Corinne won every goldfish race at Lavender Lake every summer, every fall, every winter, and every spring. And if you ever go to a state fair, you might realize that whoever wins first place will get a blue ribbon. So they're very excited about that. So I made all of Corinne's ribbon a blue ribbon. You can see those cute little turtles hiding on lots of these pages. Baby fish would come and say, Corinne, please show us all your pretty Orando goldfish ribbons again. We want to win some races, some racing ribbons one day. They couldn't help but stare at her fire engine red lips. Orando goldfish, it's a special kind and they actually have a, a special head on them. And many of them actually have reddish lips. And Ashley was able to put those red lips on Corinne. Well, their strength, her strength was deep within her magnificent flowing fins. They could swish extra water with each swirling stroke across the small lake from start to finish. Corinne practiced her swimming strokes every day in the middle of the shimmering water near the no fishing sign. No fishing signs also surrounded the edge of Lavender Lake amid the purple flowers. There were families having picnics around the lake, this, around the circle of purple flowers, and they were enjoying some lavender cookies or dessert. If you want to be a good swimmer, you have to practice. 
this. And actually, Michael Phelps, the champion swimmer, lives very close to me. I've seen him in little parades in town. And he practiced at least almost eight hours a day to become such a good swimmer. So, and as far as having the picnics around the lake, there is a recipe at the back of the story for lavender cookies. Now, Corinne was always the first place winner, even if the little boats were passing amid the waves were rolling. Corinne could swim around and under the boats and still be the fastest swimmer. She felt like a true champion until the day of the terrible accident. Now I did want to tell you the way, reason I got the idea of swimming in and out and around the boats was I knew a German couple who owned a sailboat company and they would go out into Deep Creek Lake all summer and they would swim all around the sailboats. So sometimes when you're writing a story, you come up with something that reminds you and you try to find a way to put it in the story. Well, Corinne was practicing her swimming strokes in the middle of Lavender Lake when she got caught on something shiny and curvy, and it was sharp. One of her special flowing fins was trapped by a large treble fishing hook, three hooks in one. Someone was fishing near the boats. Fishing was not allowed, so Corinne forgot to be careful. She expected everyone to follow the no fishing signs. Now, if you've ever gone fishing or looked at fishing hooks, a lot of times it's only one hook, but this one wasn't a double hook. This was a treble hook, which means three. So if you get caught by this, you really get caught. Corinne pulled and tugged to get free but her striped flowing fin was trapped by that shiny metal fishing hook. Oh no, what shall I do? Corinne wailed with fright as her red head trembled. She jerked so hard and so many times to get free, she tore off the bottom half of her right flowing fin. Now you probably know what the word wailed means. I bet you do. Yes, it means like cried out. And you might know what trembled means. You probably do. Trembled means you're shaking. Well, the fin, it floated away like a toy sailboat as a small wave rippled by. Corinne was finally free but with only half a flowing fin. Oh no, what happened? I lost half of one of my strong swimming fins, sobbed Corinne. Corinne cried and cried. Not only was her fin ripped, her heart was broken. Her dreams were shattered. When Corinne tried to swim, she could only glide around in large circles. The half fin could not keep up with the other strong fin. So around and around she would circle. And if you notice, Ashley put these little curvy lines on the page and you really got the feeling that the water was going around as Corinne was trying to swim. It adds movement to the page. Well, will I ever swim from edge to edge of Lavender Lake again? Corinne was afraid of the answer to that question. She was afraid. 
Well, her friends tried to comfort Corinne. Her friend Bluebell felt sorry for Corinne. She cried out loud whenever she tried to talk to Corinne. Oh, Corinne, why did this happen to you of all the swimming fish? You're the champion, bellowed Bluebell. Bluebell could only see what Corinne had lost. So she was trying to help, and you can find the two little turtles there. They're trying to be friends too and help each other because you probably have a friend and friends try to help each other. That's the beauty of having friends. I'm very lucky because I do have lots of friends. Well, here comes her other friend. Now her friend Flame was so mad about that three-way fish hook that his scales would bristle and shiver. Why don't people follow the laws like they should? Flame was so angry, he could not help Corinne. Now, bristle, you might know what that word means, but if something is going to bristle, it's going to like stick up, almost like the porcupine, the spikes on the porcupine will stick up. So he tried to help her too, but that wasn't, it wasn't working. He couldn't really help her. He was so mad. You can find a little turtle there, too. Well, here comes her next friend. This is her friend, Green Eyes, could always see joy when others were blind. Green Eyes could blow gigantic air bubbles any time, any place. Green Eyes told Corinne he would visit her every day for a month. He would teach Corinne how to blow bubble blankets. Corinne, amid her tears, blew bubbles with green eyes. Now, if green eyes came for a month, I wonder if you know how many days are in a month. Well, there's seven days in a week. Can anyone guess how many days are in a month? Some of you know, yes, there's usually 30 days. Sometimes there's 31, and if it's a special month, it only has 28 or 29. So they're gonna blow these blankets. Now the bubbles gathered together like frog eggs, and they formed a bubble blanket. Corinne rested under the bubble blanket for a while each day. New thoughts grew while she was under the crystal clear covers. Corinne found a new Corinne. Her friend Green Eyes believed in Corinne, and now Corinne believed in herself. Wow, that was exciting. It took a while. It didn't happen right away. Because sometimes we change our thinking. We thought one way but we learn to think a different way. Well, Corinne chose a new path. She encouraged the young fish to swim out far into the gentle rippling lake to see all the wonders and then come back and to the edge and tell her of the surroundings and their adventures. So she didn't get to go, but she enjoyed having the other fish go out and tell her what they saw. Corinne wound up, she imagined that she was swimming with them through the warm ripples. So she wasn't actually swimming herself, but she was able to imagine that she was. All the young fish gathered around Corinne to learn the secrets of swimming far and fast. They practiced every day 
to get ready for the goldfish races at Lavender Lake. Please, Coach Corinne, teach us all that you know, they pleaded. And so she did. Ready, swimmers? Swish, swish. Right, left. Swish, swish. Faster, faster. Swish, swish. And look how Ashley gave Corinne that little whistle. I just love the pictures that she had. And maybe you can find that cute little turtle in this picture. And one fish is holding a sign that says G-O. Some of you probably know that word. Yes, you're right. The word is go. Well, Corinne loved to listen and coach the young fish before and after a day of strong swimming. She would write their adventures as if they were her own. She had little storybooks. The young fish loved to visit her waterproof library and read her stories, especially Water Secrets, Franny's First Wind, and Champion Forever. Corinne was so busy coaching and writing, she had no reason to cry about her missing half fin anymore. Corinne was ready to watch others swim the races at Lavender Lake every summer, fall, winter, and spring. There she is. Ashley had her writing away on the stories. Whoops, sorry. Let me go back a page. This is the last page. Well, at the very end, Corinne was F R E E, which spells, yes, free. She was free to be her new self from Finn to Finn. And you can see that the little turtles are very happy for Corinne and her new life. And at the very end of the book, just for the fun of it, I wanted to include some the recipe for Lavender Lake cookies. And they are actually made with little lavender petals and they have a special taste. And if it's not sweet enough for you, you can always add a little extra sugar. At the very end, there is a picture of a goldfish and all the parts of a goldfish. And you can see there are little lines and the letters go from A all the way through the alphabet to, to M, which is the middle level. So um, we might have some scientists and biologists in the group who want to learn about goldfish and other animals too. And that was the story of Corinne's fin. And here are my cute little turtles at the very end. Thank you so much for listening. Okay. Good. I hope you enjoyed the story. Now I had some things that since we are living in the time of the virus, this is a very unusual time and we're not able to do all the things that we were used to doing. So I came up with some things that you might think about doing during this time. You might do some different things. You might write some stories. And if you can't write the words, you can tell the words to your grown up. And then they can write down what you say. And you could draw the pictures too. You could 
create some little bag puppets and you could make do the, some little puppet shows. That might be fun to do during this time. And you might have some outside adventures. I like to walk in the woods a lot. So you might do some nature walks with a grown up. You might collect some leaves and then try to learn what the name of the tree is and study the leaf. They're all different. One year when I was teaching, one of the really fun things we did in winter is we went outside and painted the snow. It was so much fun. I think I enjoyed it more than the children. Now, one good thing about how, taking a walk, it's very important to sometimes go the same on the same path because you'll notice more if you take the same walk through all the seasons you'll be able to see things how they really change and a lot of times when I was teaching in West Virginia I would go to Cathedral State Park and walk the trails in there. And it got to the point that I just almost knew the trail by heart. And other times in Maryland, I would go to Harrington Manor and walk the yellow trail. And I would see the ferns and all the different flowers, the wildflowers when they would come up. So it's fun every once in a while to always take the same path. You'll be surprised what you notice. Uh, now you might want to help your parents during the virus season because life is very different for them. Some of the moms and dads can't even go to work because they're busy at home and they have other things they have to do. So you might want to be extra pleasant to your parents. Like maybe try to tell them some jokes or make up some funny things so you can get them to laugh. And you might talk about some of your favorite things that you used to do and some of the new things that you're doing. And you can also talk about maybe things that you've missed during this virus time, things you used to do, but you can't really do now. So one thing that happened in my neighborhood is my neighbor has two little boys and one of the boys was having a birthday. I think this was in March. I'm not exactly sure of the month but nobody was going any place. But all of a sudden, I looked out my window and I saw some cars with balloons hanging out the windows and it was really cute. They had like a drive-by birthday party. So sometimes you'll be very creative and think of really different things to do. Okay. If anyone is interested in, in the book. I have lots of books of Corinne Spin. You can go to my website, which is www.daledabney.com. My email address is daledabney at gmail.com and don't forget to put the Y in. And also Headline Books. They sell the, they have the storybook too and so does Amazon. But if you want me to write a special message, you'll probably have to get it from me or I can arrange to write it, write a secret message in there for you. Okay. Um, Dale, we do yes. have, we do have a question. Um, okay. Someone, someone has asked if you have a new book coming out. 
Well, actually I do. I'm so excited that Corinne is going to have a sequel. And a sequel means it's like the story continues. So I don't want to tell too many secrets, but there is something about a swim team. And I love swim teams because my daughters were on a swim team for years and years and years. I drove over to Alpine Lake for 13 years. And so that's what's going to happen to Corinne and certain things are going to happen. So I don't want to tell too much. I do have some other stories that I've written, but they're not published yet. But if you write stories, you always have to try to make them better. And I'm in a little writing group. There's five of us and we meet once a month. Well, now we're doing it on Zoom because we can't quite meet, but each month, we send each other something we've written and then when we get together we talk about it and we share ideas and they helped me with things for Corinne like when Corinne changed her thinking uh, at first I had it happen too quickly and one of the writers said oh she's going to need more time to change her thinking. So that's when I had her under the bubble blanket for longer. Yes. Thank you, Dale. This has been so much fun to have you on Zoom in the books. Thank you everyone on Facebook for joining us. And Dale, I hope you'll come again soon. Okay, thank you. This was great fun. I love teaching and I never really wanted to retire, so this is a little bit like it. Thank you, Kathy, and Headline Books. Mm -hmm.